Hello everybody, good evening and welcome to another Emerge service. I trust you've had an amazing Wednesday so far. Uh, it's always an encounter with the Spirit of God every time we gather to meet and tonight will not be any different. Okay, right now you know the drill. Get out your mobile devices, of course you should be using them now and let us share these great watch parties and let somebody know. Let this miracle of God tonight be on your timeline. You don't want to miss this on your timeline and I'm trusting God that somebody who desperately needs to hear God's word tonight or to cry out to God tonight will encounter this on your timeline. My name is Wiley Afelumo and it's a privilege to be leading you tonight. Amen. Okay, share time, share time, share time. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for another uh, amazing time in your presence. Precious Spirit of God, I ask that you take absolute control. We turn this moment over to you. We ask that we seize this moment to glorify Jesus. We ask that the name of the Lord will be lifted up. I ask that miracles will take place. I ask that lives will be transformed. I pray that somebody will hear you. Somebody on the verge of suicide, or somebody on the verge of giving up, somebody of the verge on the verge of just quitting on life, quitting on themselves. May they hear the voice of God today. May you speak to us like a father who loves his children. I ask that you take absolute control. Let your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. At this juncture, I uh, will spend some time in praise and worship and then I'll return as we pray. Let's receive the ministry of Inspire. Good evening, family, and welcome to church. Welcome to Rebirth. Amen. Join us as we lead you to praise and worship. Hallelujah. Amen. Are we ready? Let's go.
did for us. We worship you, Jesus. We proclaim your authority in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, Father. We worship you this evening.
precious name, we have worship. Amen. 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 Enjoy the service. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We worship you. Faithful God. Faithful God. You do all things well. We glorify your name. We adore you. Accept our praise and our worship in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Okay, we're going into the Word of God straight up uh, today. I'll be talking about what I've titled Programmed for Triumph. Programmed for Triumph. Uh, but specifically, I'll be talking about you are born of God. You are born of God. Let's open our Bibles to Genesis uh, chapter 1, verses 26 to 28. And then we'll also go to 1 John chapter 4 and then 1 John chapter 5. 1 John and uh, 4 and 1 John 5. Praise God. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his, no, in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them. Say, God bless them. Amen. And God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth over every living thing that moves on the earth hallelujah first john first john and chapter four praise the name of the lord remember our word for the year dominion so you can already begin to see that again and i'll tie everything together even in the last two weeks i will see that what god is saying to us is consistent first john 4 4 it says you are of god little children and have overcome them. Say, I have overcome them. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. What you carry is bigger than what is assailing you. Say, I carry overload. Praise God. You carry God on your inside. You carry God on your inside. You say, you are of God. Of God. Of God. Now, First John, just flip a page uh, forward. First John uh, chapter 5, verse 4 also. He says, for whatever is born of God. And I wish he said whoever, but he says whatever. So he covers whoever and he covers whatever. Even if a cat in your house is born of God, the Bible says he overcomes the world. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith, our faith programmed for triumph. You are of God. Say, I am of God. Hallelujah. Now, if you watch superhero movies, and I like to do that, uh, if you watch DC or Marvel, and I know some of you do that, if you don't understand what that is, just ask some people around you, ask a teenager or your children, and they'll tell you a little more about that. So if you watch uh, superhero movies, every now and then they take the time to do origins, movies called origins. They take us to the origin of a particular uh, superhero. They help us to understand where they come from, what is their story? Where did they get their superpowers from? Uh, for example, Spider-Man. Uh, we know that uh, Spider-Man was a nerd, a wimpy, uh, kind of a young guy. And then one day he was beaten by this uh, unique species of a spider. And he began to uh, uh, exhibit the same traits of that spider. He can shoot webs, he can creep on walls, and all of that. Now, the moment you watch an origin movie, or an origin edition, uh, you are no longer surprised at what the superhero can do. Can no, you are no longer surprised at what he does. In fact, you expect him to do some superhuman or extraordinary feats. Uh, am I, do I have a witness? Yeah, you expect him because you're like, ah, you can shoot your web, shoot your web, do this, you know, climb, swing from this to that because you now know uh, their origin. Now, there are a few origin stories that reveal uh, that the superhero's power uh, is as a result of their birth is as a result of their birth. Their superhero powers, or their superpowers, I'm sorry, is as a result of their birth. There's a guy called uh, Thor, the son of Odin. His father is a god. Uh, Thor himself became a god, the god of thunder, the hammer-wielding god of thunder, because it was in his genes. 
it came like that. And you also know Aquaman. He got his marine life, the, the power to be underwater from his mother because his mother from, was from under the sea. And you also know Black Panther, at least uh, many of us know Black Panther. He was born into royalty. So he knew one day he was prepared to ascend the throne, to take over from his father, T'Challa. Remember T'Challa? So fantastic. Origin movies, always important to know that origins. Now, it is also important that you understand your own origins in order for you to walk in triumph. It's important for you to understand your origins. Like I said, when we know the origins of a superhero, we expect amazing things from him because of where he's coming from, the encounter he has had or who gave birth uh, to them. So when you know your origin, you prepare yourself or you understand uh, the, what is inherent to you to live a supernatural life. And the place we read in the book of Genesis talks about your origins. It said you were made in the image of God and in the likeness of God. In other words, you look like God. You look like God. You're also supposed to function like God. That's your origin. God says, let us make man in our image. Now, if you, if you listen to me very carefully today, I'm basically taking up where I left last week. Uh, Pastor Sam telling us about identity, uh, what I did on Sunday, trying to tell us that you matter to God. You have God colors within you. And, and I think that's just what God wants to do in this season. Because if we lose it in there, in our mind, we lose it out there in our world. So it is important that you know that you were made in the image of God. So you look like God and you're supposed to function like God. The divine nature of God is in you. You are crafted by a master craftsman. God's hand put you together. Remember on Sunday we read from Psalm 139. He said, I am fearfully and wonderfully and fearfully made. He said, marvelous are your works and that my soul knows well. Now you were born to have authority and as royalty you were given dominion, which means that there is a territory you are supposed to exert your influence. There's a territory you are supposed to take in particular fields of life, even physical territories that should belong to you. Even if it is just a property, a piece of land that before you leave this place, you claim that place to yourself because the Bible says he gave them dominion made in the image of God. Your dominion extends to the marine world. They said everything under the sea. It extends to the terrestrial world uh, here, the atmospheric world in the heavenlies, uh, uh, the animal world. They say everything that creeps on the face of the earth. God gave you dominion over them. Now listen to that. God did not put any limits on your influence on how far you can go. It, it does not put, it did not put any limit and it still has not put any limit on how far you can go. So you are born a superhero. Uh, you are born with superpowers. You're supposed to walk in the power and in the ability of God. Now, as we proceed, of course, you know the story, man fell and all of that, but Jesus Christ came. Uh, so we go, we, we fast forward to Apostle uh, John and he lends more force to this begins to speak after the fall of man and after his redemption in Christ. Uh, he said, you are of God, little children. He, 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 he called us little children. And maybe I'll talk about that towards the end. Little children. He said, you are of God, little children. Uh, maybe I should say that a little. When you say, when you talk about children, you, 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 your mind begins to think of their parentage. If you see a child going on the street now, say, hey, why is this boy on the street? Why are his parents? Where is his father? If you see a single, a 25-year-old man going on the street, that will be the last thing to come to your mind. So when John was saying, little children, he's saying, remember your parentage. He's connecting us to where we are from. And so some, some versions actually render that place. You are from God. You proceed from God and you have overcome them. That is, the source from which you proceed qualifies you by birthright for a life of triumph. From where you proceed, you are qualified for a life of triumph. Triumph is in your genetic coding. He said your being born again is another reason why you are an overcomer. So first you are made in the image of God, but if we fell, he said we were born again. So you have to permit licenses, warrants from heaven to live a life of triumph. The God of the heaven and the earth is your father. God gave birth to you. God gave birth to you. That is your origin. I want you to understand your origin story uh, today. Praise God. Now, in most family, 
I'm sorry, in most cases, the family of your origin determines what you're entitled to in life. I'm sure you understand that. There are certain things that uh, a very rich man's child will just experience. Or somebody born in Buckingham Palace to the royal family in the United Kingdom, they just know that somebody born on the street, except for the grace of God, may never have access to. Uh, just by being born into certain family, by birthright, they have access to certain things. They know that the throne awaits them. They know they're going to have orderlies, butlers, people waiting on them by just being born in that family. I like what uh, an actor Wesley Snipes, some of you know him, said. He said, I think of myself as a young prince from a long line of royalty. I think of myself as a young prince from a long line of royalty. Do you know who your father is? I said that your origin, that you proceed from God. Do you know who God is? Do you know who gave birth to you? Do you know what he's able to do? Do you know he can speak and suspend time? Do you know he can cause the sun to go back? Do you know he can command the sea, the, the fish, the whale, and they obey him? He can command anything. The Bible says, uh, 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 out of dust he scooped man and he breathed life into him. That's the God I'm talking about. He's almighty, he's all-powerful, he's not all-knowing, he's in yesterday, he's in today, and at the same time, he's in tomorrow. Nothing, the Bible says, no purposes of his can be withheld from him is a can-do God. What he says he will do, what he does, he will say. In fact, he never says anything until it's already accomplished. So if God says, I will bless him, means that he has already done it. That's, that's the family you proceed from. A thousand cattle on the hills belong to him. All the gold and all the silver, all the gold mines in South Africa, all the oil wells in the Middle East, everything belongs to God. That is who your father is. It is important that you understand your origin. So that it's also important that you know what is yours by, by birthright. Do you know what is yours by birthright? By being born of God? Do you know the power that works in you? The power that works in you. The Bible says it is the same power that raised Jesus from the dead and took him to heaven and sat him at the right hand of, our father, of the Father in heaven. Do you know the people in your lineage? I began to talk about that last week. Uh, the people in your lineage, Abraham, Jacob, Elijah, those are the people. If they did your family tree, Reverend Sam told us, it's not going to be Mr. Ayanshola or Mr. Chukwe Bube. It's going to be Abraham, Jeremiah. It's going to be Isaiah. It's, it's going to be uh, that, that Ruth. It's going to be Esther. It's going to be people like that in your lineage, in your lineage. Wesley Snipes says, I'm a young prince. I come from a long line of royalty. I come from a long line of royalty. It is important that you understand that. Do you know God's plans for you? Do you know the privileges you have as a family member? You know the privileges you have as a family member. There are some families, even middle class, ordinary families, when they have their children will never take taxi to school all the days of their lives. Just because of the family they are born in. Do you know the privileges you have as a part of this family? You are made in God's image and you have access to what God has access to. You can create, you are not subject to demon powers, to failure, to sickness, uh, to diseases. You are not subject to say, Pastor, well, I'm presently sick. Well, Pastor, things are presently tough. No, it does not change your parentage. It does not change your origins. In fact, if you watch some of those movies, there are times that even the Spider-Man, the Captain America, the Aquaman, they go through tough times, but it doesn't change their origin. They just need to come to the realization of who they are and still exert their power. Let me give you this illustration. You, you know, just because a... A lion is in the zoo. Does not change the fact that it's a lion. If you doubt it, next time you go to the zoo, put your hand in the lion's zoo, uh, in the lion's cage, and check and watch if it is not still a lion. And, and again, even a lion that is born in captivity, a lion that, when I say in captivity, was born maybe in the zoo, was, has never been in the jungle. If they throw a live goat into the cage for it to eat, the first place it goes for is the neck, just like the other ones in the jungle hunts, why it is written in its genetic coding. It goes instinctively for the neck, the jugular of the animal. So it doesn't change anything what you are going through right now. The coding, it hasn't changed the coding, it doesn't change the operating system that I spoke about on Sunday. It has not changed anything. So you are going to superimpose your truth. You are going to superimpose your revelation on your reality. You're going to superimpose what you know God has said about you on what you are going through. So you are programmed to triumph and to triumph is to have great victory or accomplishment. It is to be successful. It is the joy you get from success. 
to be to triumph is the joy you get from success or achievement. When you say, Yay! Or, hallelujah! Somebody shouts hallelujah, you know that is the victory sound. Something is happening in that person's life. Now, God never planned a day of defeat for you. No, he's not a wicked God. He did not plan for you to always beg, to consistently be without, to lag behind, to struggle, to survive, to be under Satan's oppression. No, 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 you are wired for triumph. No, that's, that's not the, I can confidently tell you that, that if you went to heaven and there's a book in which the story of your life is recorded, it was not in God's plan that life will keep you in a place of defeat. And that's why I said you must take your revelation and impose it upon your reality. The Bible says, God himself said to Jeremiah, he said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. They are thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a future with hope and victory in your final outcome. So you are wired to succeed. Your genetic coding is for success. And that's why our nature naturally abhors our failure. We don't like it. No, people, don't, people don't go on social media and paste a picture of their result where they have F9s. But when they get a master's or a certificate, they take the picture and put it there because we don't like it. Go to people's offices, they put their certificates of accomplishment. People are like that. And we hate, we hate failure. That's why some children, when they remember, some of you, on your way back home from school and you scored straight Fs, you just tell your dad that a goat ate your report card on the way home because you don't want to take it home. You are even ashamed. You sneak into the house. And that's how God is. So, and that's the nature of God in us. He hates failure. He doesn't like it. God is not happy with you suffering. He's not happy with you begging. He's not happy with you lagging behind. He's not happy with you borrowing to survive. God is not, it's not the nature of God. God likes it when you succeed. Any, any, any true father, your origin, your father speaks of your origin. Any true originator of a child will be happy when the child lives in success and in triumph. And did you see what God did with Job? He just bragged. He was looking at the devil. He said, have you considered my servant Job? That there is none like him. He was bragging about Job's scorecard. See, have you seen his report sheet? Like some of you, when your children uh, score maybe A's in school, when your neighbor comes, just say, ah, Junior, eh, bring water for Mr. Mr. Usman. As he brings the water for Mr. Usman, he's going, hey, what did, what did you say your report was in school? What did you score? He said, I came first. Oh, oh, yeah, that's my, I just, I just forgot. No, you wanted your friend to just hear. You're, you are proud of the success. And that's the same thing with God. He gives him joy when we do well. The Bible says he delights in the prosperity, in the well-being of his servants. He delights in the well-being of his servants. He wants you to win in life. I'm sure he looks at some of you like he looked at Adam and said, Adam, where are you? It's like, John, where, where are you? Where are you? He looks at you in your place of nakedness, of being ashamed, of being timid, and he said, no, this is not the person you are made to be. This is not who I made it to be. This is not what I put in you. This is not how I created it. This is not how I fashioned it. This was not in the program. This was, there's a bug, a virus has infected the program. This is not the program. He said, where are you? You could hear the pain in the heart of God. He's like, Adam, what are you doing here? Hiding you that should have dominion. And some of you need to get the same level of violence within you. I said, no, I can't be kept here. I can't be in this place where I'm hiding, where I'm naked, where I'm ashamed, where I'm afraid, where I'm a failure. God has given you the permit and authorization, has given you the license that you need for a triumphant life, for a victorious life. You are a blessed man. Say, I'm a blessed man. Aha. In other words, you cannot be cursed. God blessed you in the beginning. Say, and God blessed them. Reverend Sam told us that, well, from the Bible that, that uh, what's his name? Balaam. He said, how can I curse the person whom God has blessed? He said, I have received the command to bless and I cannot reverse it. He said, the shout of a king is amongst them. So it is important that you understand that you have been blessed and you cannot be cursed. Your nature is alien to a curse because God himself blessed you. The blessing, see, this is what the blessing means. It's a divine empowerment. The blessing is a divine empowerment. It's an, it's an, it's an intangible enabler or an enablement, an intangible enablement. It is the invisible force that creates visible results in your life. It is divine favor. It is also the invisible goodwill that produces visible good things in your life when they bless you. It is invisible. It's goodwill. There is joy. The Bible says it, it is the, the, the greater that blesses the lesser. There's something that comes with it. It's unseen. It's a goodwill from their spirit, but it produces tangible good things 
in your life. It is an invocation of benevolence. It means that God who has spoken is backing everything he has set up to fulfill it. He said, and God bless man. He's backing it up to ensure that when you go for your business, you are blessed. That in your marriage, that you are blessed. That on every job you place your hands to, that you are blessed. You are enveloped in a blessing. You go around with a blessing. There's no curse around you. Say, there's no curse around me. Hallelujah. Blessed. Blessed to make sense out of life. Hallelujah. Now, you may think this sounds strange, but look at children. Real origin. So I said I'll talk about that. When John was saying, you, are, you have got little children. Think of your origins. Brought this child, this, pop, uh, John said there, you have got little children and you have overcome them. Let's, let's go back to when we were children. Have you seen children play before? They think possibility. They are not limited in their minds. They imagine greatness. If you just listen, somebody will be playing the role of a king. Even though they are living in, uh, in Gagazamu somewhere. You say, I'm the king. He has a wand. He has the wife. The wife, they cook for him. You see the ladies, they go to the kitchen. Their parents may have never seen stockfish before, but in that their thin of milk, they cook stockfish. They cook everything. They cook rice. They cook salad. Because in their mind, they dream well. No limitation. They build sand castles. Uh, they, they, they build spacecrafts. They carry things and build all kinds of vehicles and, and give them names and all of that. They dream big dreams, children. They talk big. Money is not an issue. You just say, I'll buy a car. I'll do this. Oh, my daddy can do that. My daddy can get me the stadium. My daddy will take us to this. My daddy will fly us to Dubai. My daddy, and his daddy is like, he hasn't gotten his salary in eight months. You know, but children think like that. They, in their minds, they can have anything. But you know what? As we grew older, we began to allow reality and the world to steal our dreams began to allow experiences, your experiences, your fears, your associations, sometimes your, your fear, your, your friends, your budget, your bank statements, all of those things, they begin to squeeze us into the mold of this. Your bank statement looks as if uh, 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 this thing, you are, please be realistic, be, re <laughs> be realistic. You look at what is in your bank and then we begin to just, and it's not just you, even me talking, we just look at several things as we grow up. But that's not how God created us. No wonder Jesus Christ said that unless you repent and become as little children, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. And what is the kingdom of God? It's basically how God operates, the way God does things. That, that, is, that is the sphere in which God exerts his influence, God's authority, God's manner of government. He said, unless you repent and become as little children and begin to remove all those limitations and begin to think origins because children before they talk i'll tell my daddy for you i'll tell my daddy for you my daddy will beat your daddy my daddy can they think origins they remember they remember aquaman remembers i'm the son of so so woman thor remembers i'm the son of odin they remember the black panther he remembers his father I've forgotten his the father's name now they, they remember and it helps them so you must remember unless you convert and become as little children. So what God is saying is, don't let the world squeeze you into its own mold. Romans 12 verse 2, it says, be renewed in the transforming of your mind. And God is saying to become as a child. Jesus Christ said to, to Nicodemus, he said, you must be born again. There must be a renewal. There must be a transformation in your mind. What God is saying today, press the reset button. Just go and press the reset. Ta Take everything back to default setting. Wipe out all the wrong programmings that have been that have been put in there, and return back to the original setting of God bless them, the blessing, the the, the fruitfulness. Uh, the press the reset button. It takes you back to dominion. It takes you back to authority. It takes you back to opening your mouth wide, and I will feel it. That's what God says. It takes you back to that place of confidence of faith of the victory that overcomes the world he said whatever is born of god overcomes the world and this is the victory that overcomes the world the reset button will take you back there and it is in your mind so you are going to do away with failure you're going to do away with fear you're going to do away with the frustration thinking you're going to stop thinking like a victim those are and i'm teaching things i'm also working on working and say going to meet somebody and i'm i'm going there like they should help me like like i have a heart in my hand a pan in my hand and god say no don't go there like a victim don't go there as if you need favor go there as if you expect them to do what they are supposed to do for you because you are royalty you are royalty you are royalty hallelujah praise the name of the lord we're going to take some time right now and and pray we're going to take some time right now and pray and 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 as we pray i remember the story of a sculptor 
no way sculptor is a carver carves and this is a stone sculpt sculptor and um, there was this jagged rock just horrible mound of well a rock a boulder of rock in a particular place and then uh, it of course when they are sculpting they build things around so he covered it up and then by the time so he built something around it while he was working for maybe weeks or months and then by the time he finished there was this picture of a lion like you know, very beautiful with the mane. This guy brought it out of a rock. And they went and met him. So in asking, people were taking pictures and selfies around the lion and all of that. And somebody asked him, how did you do this? How did you achieve this mighty feat? How did you achieve this mighty feat? He said, well, all I did was that when I looked at that rock, I saw a lion trapped inside. And all I did was to chip away from that rock everything that does not look like a lion. I chipped away from that rock everything that does not look like a lion and I was and I was and I was able to strike at the lion that was trapped on the inside. There's greatness trapped inside you. There's victory trapped inside you. There are ideas that will give you millions and I mean hundreds of millions some of you of naira some of millions in the dollars ideas that will take your world by storm. For some of you, it may just even be to raise your children to become world champions. Ideas like that trapped inside you. This evening, we may not pray much depending on time. I want you to take time and say, Father, I want to chisel out, or I chisel out, take the, take the initiative to do it. I chisel out everything that does not look like a lion. <laughs> because we belong to the lion of the tribe of Judah. Everything that does not look like victory. Everything that does not look like God, that does not look like success, that does not look like triumph, that does not look like abundant life. By the word of God, I chisel it out tonight in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, we take the chisel of the word of God this evening according to what we have heard tonight and we begin to chisel away from our lives everything that does not look like God, everything that does not look like the victorious man that you made us, the superman that you made us. We chisel our faith for the Bible says, thanks be to God who leads us in his triumph. We chisel our fear. We chisel it out today. For the Bible says, your word says that you have not given us a spirit of fear or of timidity or the spirit of love, of power and of a sound mind. So we chisel it out of our lives. In the name of Jesus, God, I chisel out small thinking, small thinking, smooth needs, cheap needs. We chisel chisel them out of our lives right now in the name of Jesus because your word says open your mouth wide and I will feel it and I will feel it libra. everything that places a limitation upon our life we chisel it out right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus everything that causes our minds to be agitated every spirit of worry and anxiety we chisel them out of our lives in the name of Jesus because your word says is that that you'll give us your peace that passes all understanding to garrison our hearts labels that don't look like you names that don't look like you habits that don't look like you attitudes that don't look like you we chisel them out of our lives today in the name of Jesus we chisel out the victims mentality because we have the victory that overcomes the world. We chisel away laziness. For your word says that a diligent hand shall be made richer. The diligent hand shall rule. Foul thinking, Lego zipra kata paigo zeta, weak thinking, Lego zapre koto, regeje 
jeprakataba fruitless thinking e roga bababa ye go dagaba so kapaga libro sapa we chisel them out in the name of jesus that the lion of the tribe of judah may emerge that glory may emerge that triumph may emerge that victory may emerge that favor may emerge that we may come out of what has trapped us and come into the place of expression and come to the place of fulfillment and come into the place of exploits in the name of jesus where we've been trapped in a rock we break free and we come out where we've been trapped in fear we break free and we come out where we've been trapped in limitations of the mind we break free and we come out in the name of jesus beauty is emerging out of our ashes glory is coming out of our painful stories in the name of jesus success is coming out of defeat in the place of former defeat you are giving us present victories in the name of jesus in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. We chisel away, we just, we just, we just set them aside. We free ourselves from them. Like blind Bartimaeus, we remove that garment that identifies us with a life of begging. We throw it off. We, we put away our begging pan. We put away our, our, our dirty begging garments. And we reach out to a new life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says we proceed from God, little children, and you have overcome them. And I told us earlier that by being children uh, of royalty, certain things are just yours by right. Certain things are yours by right. Certain things are yours by right. Certain things. Wesley Snipes says, I see myself as a young prince coming from a long line of royalty. Certain things are yours. Now, in Galatians chapter 4, uh, somewhere there, well, I think from verse 1 to verse 4, the Bible says, an heir, a child, although he is an heir, does not differ at all from a slave, but he is kept under tutors and masters and teachers until the time set by his father. But when the time comes, when he becomes a son, he comes into the fullness of his inheritance. See, certain things, if you don't grow up, if you don't lay claim, if you don't say, I am of age, they will keep being kept away from you. So tonight, just a simple prayer. In the realm of the Spirit, say, I present my birth certificate. I present my legal right, my, my, my will. I don't know how to put it now. The document that says that I have an entitlement to these things or my birth certificate. I present it in the realm of the spirit uh, right now and I begin to lay claim to all that is my right by the reason of my origin in the name of Jesus. Pray that prayer. It looks strange, but announce it in the realm of the spirit. And I'm telling you, the forces that rule the earth, that control the earth, that manages things, and they will hear you. Satan will hear you. Angels will hear you. And they will make things happen in the name of Jesus. I'm a young prince. I come from a long line of royalty. I'm a son of a king. Legedoza prakata rogeba. I have dominion. I have authority. Rogeja prakata bozete kalaba. I become a joint heir with Christ. Ragoba jata kalaba. I have access to the inheritance that he has access to. Regeba become joint heirs. Joint heirs. We have calibro. I share in his power, his privilege, and in his possessions. Regejata calibra kata. And so right now, I begin to present my spiritual birth certificate that shows that I'm a child of God. God, I present it in the realm of the spirit uh, that which says I have a right to life. I have a right to the pursuit of happiness like Americans will say I have a right to peace. Uh, I have a right to joy. I have a right to a good life. I have a right to children. I have a right to a good marriage. I present it before God in the name of Jesus. Say I am of age. Galibanokayabrakata. Ingo ragadaka. 
I am of age, so I receive my inheritance. I am of age, so I receive my inheritance. I claim them out of the hands of custodians. I possess them out of the hands of those who have sat over them, those who have illegally kept them and detained them. I take that which is mine. In the name of Jesus, take your children because they are yours. Take your wife because she is yours. Take your husband because he is yours. Take that job, take that business, that initiative. Take it. The Bible says in Psalm 84 verse 11 that the Lord God is a son and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them who walk uprightly. Nothing good is withheld from you. Lay claim to it. Lay claim to it. It is the Father's pleasure to give you the kingdom. I present the document that entitles me to everything that you have promised me. I present the word of God. I present the word of God. Your word says you daily load us with benefits. Lord, I present that word in the name of Jesus. Your word says I shall make the breast of kings. I present that word that the forces of the Gentiles shall be yielded to me. Lord, I present that word before you in the name of Jesus. I present the word that says by the stripes of Jesus I am healed. So I possess healing as a possession in the name of Jesus. He said, I shall lie down and nothing shall make me afraid. I present that as my inheritance that I might have restful nights and peaceful days in the name of Jesus. He said, the psalmist said, I lay down and I slept and I awoke because the Lord sustained me. A covenant of peace, O God. Father, let there be deliveries. Deliveries of that which belong to your people. Things that have hung. Things that have been delayed. Things that tutors and guardians and custodians, invisible custodians, that have stayed that that have stayed beyond the permitted time, that that whose leases have expired but are still sitting over the things that belong to your people. We bring the document today and we begin to lay claim on behalf of your people in the name of Jesus. Somebody's salary has been held back for long. Lord, according to the document that shows that we originate from you. God, we call it forth in the name of Jesus. Lord, somebody's business has dried up literally. We present that document that whatever that we lay our hands to do shall succeed. Cause that business to revive. Cause that business to revive. Cause that business to revive. Father, somebody's business depends on clients uh, giving them briefs and jobs and They've not had any since the beginning of this year, literally. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that the heart of kings are in your hands and you move them wherever pleases you. As easily as you direct the course of a river, begin to wake people up, begin to stir hearts, begin to raise our patrons and clients to call them. Let their phone begin to ring. Let, their, let them get emails. Let, let them just, uh, let, let people contact them in the name of Jesus. The way you kept the king awake in order for Mordecai to be be honored. Lord, do it for somebody because this is the time. This is the time. We have found the document. We have understood our origins and we begin to lay claim to the things that are ours by right. To the things that are ours by right. In the name of Jesus, say over yourself, I am who God says I am. In the name of Jesus, not what my condition says I am. Somebody needs to decree that over themselves right now. I am who God says I am, not what my condition, not what my pocket. Easily we get defined by what we drive, by what we don't drive, where we live, 
what, uh, what our bank account says, how we feel. I am not what I wear. I am not where I live. I am not what I have. I am not what I work. I am who God says I am. He says I am blessed and I'm highly favored. That's who I am. He says I am healed. That's what I believe. That's who I am. I don't listen to my feelings. I don't consult my pocket to make decisions. I'm not defined by my academic qualification. I am who God says I am. I have a divine authorization for triumph. God causes me to triumph. Not the things I have amassed. Not the people I know. God causes me to triumph in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I begin to pray for God-engineered triumphs for your people in different areas of your life. God designed, God engineered, God orchestrated, God fabricated rakapo zeketa triumphs in different areas of your life. High achievements, great successes, victories on every side. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you have an authorization to, to succeed. You have been blessed of God. You have been blessed of God. Say it, I'm blessed of God. I am fruitful in every department of my life. I am fruitful, blessed of God, blessed of God, blessed of God. I cannot be cursed. I cannot be stopped. I cannot be bound. I cannot be limited. I am blessed of God in the name of Jesus. In every department of my life, I do not suffer loss. I do not suffer loss. I am prolific and productive. I am fruitful in the name of Jesus. I am not barren. Blessed are not cursed. Blessed are not cursed. Blessed are not cursed. Blessed beyond the curse. In Geroshka Kalababa. Blessed beyond measure. Blessed beyond measure. In the name of Jesus. Regeja Prakatabo Jata Kalabadaga. Legezembro Kataba. Nga Roke Jeketege Yababa. Zukatagalaba. I enforce the blessing of the Lord upon every area of your life, spirit, body, and soul. I enforce the blessing. I enforce the blessing. I enforce the blessing. You are blessed of the Lord. You are blessed of the Lord. I enforce fruitfulness in the name of Jesus in your body, in your business, in that consultancy, in all your endeavor, in your relationship with God, in your relationship with your spouse, in your relationship with your children. I say be fruitful. I say be fruitful. Everything around you begins to spring up in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. God put this in my heart this morning and I want us to pray it. I want us to pray it that every spring, that springs within me that have dried up, come alive. Springs, springs within me that have dried up. Springs that once beautified my life, that once gave me a story, that once made me to raise my head up, that have dried up, caused them to come alive. Things that made my life beautiful that are now dead. Springs of creativity, of innovation, of love for your spouse, of spiritual gifts, of good health, of a good life, of money making ideas, of physical vitality. Springs, things that the devil stole, wells that he had come to pour sand in and stopped, caused them to come alive again. In the name of Jesus, be Begin to pray that prayer right now. Springs within me that have dried up. I cause them to begin to well up again, to spring forth again. Let them come alive in the name of Jesus. Springs of wisdom, springs of the gifts of the Spirit that have dried up. Springs of innovative ideas. Of creativity. Used to have healthy relationships like right now all of them have just fizzled out. Command that spring to spring forth again. In the name of Jesus, don't see channels of my spirit open up. Cause rivers of life to begin to well up from within you again. That thing that was a glory around you, that made you attract people, that made you attract glory, that made you attract good people, that has dried up, cause it to come alive again. In the name of Jesus, for some Somebody is just the springs of your health, physical vitality. You used to be strong, but in the last 365 days, one year to two years, uh, yeah, doctors can't say what it is, but you are not as strong as, 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 uh, as uh, there's a word I'm looking for. You are not as physically fit uh, yeah, like you used to be. That's a spring drying up. Command it to come alive again. In the name of Jesus. Every spring of 
of my existence that has dried up I command you to come alive in the name of Jesus spring forth again wells that have been stopped by the devil I unstop them in the name of Jesus let rivers of life flow from me again rivers of abundant life rivers of joy rivers of favor rivers of goodness rivers of of just the love of God all around me rivers 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 in the name of Jesus in the lastly begin to say I press I just press that reset button I go back to my factory setting in the name of Jesus where how God made me I renew my mind everything that was not there from the beginning I begin to do away with it in the name of Jesus whatever was not there from the beginning do away with it we press the reset button we press the reset button we go back to our default setting we break the curse of limitation that has been accommodated and in our lives that has contained our minds we press that reset button we go back to the way god made us we are converted tonight and we become as little children we begin to see possibilities we dare to dream again like joseph we dare to confess again we dare to believe God again we dare to try again we try to we, we dare to reach out again in the name of Jesus we drop every lie of the devil we bring the antivirus of the word and we remove every corruption in our system in the name of Jesus we recover everything that was taken from us Everything that we lost over time, we possess them again. Even as we press the reset button. We give you praise, O oh God. We give you glory. We bless your name. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Heavenly Father. You are of God and you have overcome them. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Kerukaba, stop saying that you have no one to help you. God says, I should tell you, go outside and you will see help arise for you. Go towards what you want and you will see help come. Don't sit down and say you can't. God is on your inside. Stand up and head towards that place. Stand up and go ask them again. Stand up and go knock on the door again. In the name of Jesus, you are not at a disadvantage. You are not incapacitated. You are not incapacitated. You are not incapacitated. The Bible says our God can deliver by many or by few. In the name of Jesus, I bring comfort to that person who lost something that was dear to them. The comfort of the Holy Spirit. Your channels are springing forth again. Your channels of life, of, of joy, of existence, of, 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 of vitality, they are springing forth again. Rivers of life are flowing forth within you in the name of Jesus there are already threats on your job that uh, they may they may reduce pay and all of that uh, God said to say to you fear not that was not your source in the first place he will take care of you he will take care of you he says I will take care of you you will be fine in the name of Jesus. He said, I should tell to somebody, just come closer to me. You're moving far away. God says, I should tell you, I miss you. That's what God says. I miss you. I miss you. Come closer. Come closer. Come closer. Come closer. You need to keep seeing the image of the divine. You keep seeing the image of God. It is with God that you begin to see who you truly are. The further you go, the, the, far, the more far removed you will be from the ideal that God created it to be. So he said, I miss you. He says, come, 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 come. In the name of Jesus, we give you glory, God. We give you praise. Thank you for what you have done tonight and what you will keep doing. God, let these things that we have heard keep resonating in our spirits, that we proceed from God, that our origin is of God, that our root is in God. We tap life from God. We have overcome them. 
in the name of Jesus. We give you glory. Thank you for the spirit of triumph that is all around us. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wish we had more time. Could have done this for another 30 minutes so that we just keep praying. Uh, but I'm also mindful of the fact that you're using your data and all of that. Um, but keep praying. Just thank God it to be on the, on the, on the computer. Keep, listen to what I said again. And I will do that too. And let God do something uh, inside you. Remember to share this. Uh, please uh, give your offerings, uh, your tithes, your special gifts to the Lord. Uh, and I'll pray over that right now. The details will be at the bottom of the screen. Uh, we appreciate you doing that. And I pray that God will bless you. God will bless you. God will bless you. The Bible says he's not unmindful of your labor of love. Father, I ask that you bless every person who gives tonight in the name of Jesus as their giving helps us to do the things we do and to reach the people we reach. My King and my God, I know it's a, it's a sacrifice, especially in this season. And Lord, as they make that sacrifice, you who saw Noah's sacrifice and made a promise concerning his generations, perceive and see this sacrifice tonight and make a promise concerning their tomorrow. I give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Remember to still share this never too late. You can even still share tomorrow because as many as possible people need to hear this. I love you all. Remember, you matter to God. Bye.